on Facebook, I've found eight out of 25 interesting facts from my life that I think are braggable and shareworthy. Chelsea Clinton once babysat me. Miss America 2000 and I had a sleepover. <laughs> um, last week I ran into Cynthia Nixon at the grocery store and we had this totally sex in the city moment where we talked about bread and if you're gonna get a baguette, you might as well get a white baguette instead of whole wheat. Um, I uh, went shoe shopping with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. I, um, Oh, I have a first place trophy in basketball, swimming, and dramatics. <laughs> I was asked to be a Hooters intern when I was just 13 years old. Um, I'm really good at impersonating people's voices, and I'm a liar. Uh, <laughs> one Easter, I was in Washington visiting my grandmother, and we went to church for Easter services, and the Clintons just happened to be there. And so I came home telling this story that Chelsea Clinton just thought I was the cutest little girl that she offered to babysit me. And we hung out until 10 p.m. playing Go Fish and watching TV. Um, I did, in fact, meet Miss America. She invited me into her, her hotel room. I tried on her tiara. I have pictures of me wearing this tiara. Yet for some reason, I told the story that we had a sleepover because I thought that that was more scandalous. Um, I didn't run into Cynthia Nixon. My mom ran into Cynthia Nixon. They did not talk. I wasn't there. I said I was. Um, I went shoe shopping and, with myself, and there was this girl from the musical Spring Awakening, and I'm a big fan of Spring Awakening, and so when I was telling my friends, like, oh, I was shoe shopping, and there she was, and no one thought this was interesting, so I just <laughs> I just said, oh, well, you know, it was just Mary Kate, but she's the more scandalous one, so. Um, I've never been to Hooters. Uh, I was in LA one summer, and I kept walking by a Hooters, and I just thought that it would be this, like, that I'd come home with this crazy story, like, yeah, I was in LA, and uh, the manager of this restaurant, Hooters, came and, like, wants me to intern. Um, <laughs> but that didn't happen. <laughs> So basically, when I was a little pretender in fourth grade, I had my first boyfriend, first kiss, first love, with this boy, Henry Dwyer. And when you're in fourth grade, you, and you have a boyfriend, you don't talk to your boyfriend. And uh, we have independent reading for 20 minutes every day. And so for 20 minutes, I would peer over my latest piece of Judy Bloom literature, and I would stare at Henry Dwyer. And we would have these like eye fucking moments of just like staring at each other. And but we would never talk. But I would call him every night, 212-334-3139, and we would talk on the phone. But um his mother would always pick up, and so being the little pretender I was, she would say, he'd say, hello, and I'd say, Hi, this is Gabe Coffee calling. Can I please talk to Henry Dwyer? And I thought that impersonating Henry's best friend, Gabe, would totally get me to talk to Henry and like no one would question our relationship because this is a secret relationship, no parents knew. And, but of course, Gabe at the time probably had a squeakier voice than I did, yet I impersonated him 12 octaves lower. So, um, and I just thought I was like this little genius until one day I did my trick and his mother yelled, Henry, Lola's on the, I mean, Gabe is on the phone for you. <laughs> and I was just humiliated. I just couldn't take that. So I hung up and the next day I broke up with him. Um, <laughs> a few years later, I'm still pretending my way through my life and I have a new crush on a new boy. And for months, I've been copying and pasting stuff from his AOL Instant Messenger profile and putting it into a document on my computer entitled Crushes. And along with lists of other boys that in case this doesn't work, that I can go on and try and pursue. So um, I'm like memorizing with flashcards and like mini quizzes in my brain, of, like PSAT multiple choice questions of like his favorite movies. And we're hanging out face to face and just sort of like casually like dropping names like Pulp Fiction and like Goodfellas and 
um, rear window because uh, Martin Scorsese, uh, no, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, and Alfred Hitchcock have become my movie mentors, and they taught me everything. I'm now this like little. I'm no longer a liar because I've actually become this little walking, talking IMDb slut. <laughs> it's all. It's, I mean, in the end, honestly, I don't regret any of the lies I've ever told. I still stretch the truth. I exaggerate and make stuff up all the time. Um, if anything, it's made me a better person, and I've, <laughs> I've become some of these things. They don't, I wish I could say that they've hit me in the butt. They've only taught me who I might want to be in. <laughs> so, uh, and I know now that I can't always exaggerate to a certain extent. I know that no one's going to believe me if I say, yeah, Chelsea Clinton babysat me, because that story just doesn't really work anymore. But I can say that we were just spending Easter together. <laughs> <laughs>